so in this diagram you can see that the light from the source is is focused using a lens on a glass slab parallel glass slab and this is the another glass slab for compensating so why are we are using this second glass slab so if you closely see the path of the beam so the beam comes and from this point to that point uh, you can see uh, that it it is refracted at this point and also refracted so this beam is par this beam will be parallel so only there is some parallel shift except that the beam is this beam and this beam is parallel to each other now you know that whenever a beam of light or a ray of light enters changes medium its speed inside the medium uh, is is slower compared to because glass is a denser medium so speed uh, will be reduced inside the glass so it uh, it creates a, a, a kind of a path length or it can introduce a path difference because the speed of light has been decreased so now again you can see that at this point at this point it is transmitted and the some of the light is reflected back by uh, by total internal reflection so some of the light is reflected back and then from at this point uh, it uh, enters from denser medium to rarer medium so it goes away from the normal so this beam of light which is being reflected back uh, is passing this glass slab two times while entering and while exiting so uh, so this reflected beam is uh, facing two times a uh, path length inside the glass now the beam which has been uh, transmitted the pencil which has been transmitted only uh, faces the the beam the slab or only passes this slab for one time so by using this slab and if if it we if we cannot ignore the thickness of this slab then then this path length can uh, create a difference in path for the transmitted beam and reflected beam so so for this uh, transmitted beam we introduce a uh, another glass uh, glass slab parallel to the first glass slab so that this beam uh, passes two times the same uh, same thickness of the same refractive index because this reflected beam passes two times it passes two times while entering and while exiting so now by introducing this slab we can see that it passes two times the same thickness of same refractive index so that the path difference created uh, can be cancelled for the two beams this beam and this beam both of them are passing through the same path length inside the glass slab so that the effect can be cancelled out now the whole of the optical portion of this apparatus that is the everything above the stone ha had to be covered with a wooden cover to prevent air currents because when you rotate this this uh, whole apparatus so air can move between this uh, th these rays creating rarer and denser mediums which can uh, create interference which can change the path difference uh, between these two beams which are being interfered and which are which we are viewing in this telescope
so to prevent it from such uh, things uh, to prevent from air currents and rapid changes in temperature the temperature of the room can also change while uh, because this observation take a long hours of time so temperature can change and uh, because of that the the density of air can change and which can change the refractive index and finally the path difference can change so the optical path difference the adjustment was so every whole of the apparatus is covered with some wooden cover the adjustment was effected as follows the mirrors now uh, this is all about adjustment so uh, how the experiment was conducted the mirrors having been having been adjusted by screws in the casting so let's view the screws so you can see that there are some screws behind these mirrors so when you uh, tighten or unscrew these these screws the the mirrors can move or can be tilted so that it is always perpendicular to the beam of light it, these are for manual adjustments the mirrors having been adjusted by screws in the castings the casting are are the uh, are the bodies on which the mirrors have been imposed which held the mirrors against which they are pressed by a spring behind the mirrors and the casting there were springs which pushed the mirror till light from both pencil could be seen in the telescope so in the telescope the light from both the mirrors were seen and then after that the experiment could be conducted so the light comes and it is split into two parts and the adjustment were made we tightened or the screws so that the beam of light is falling at the specified angles and these multiple reflections could be possible then the beam of the two lights could be viewed through the telescope the length of the two paths were measured by a light wooden rod a wooden rod was used to measure the distance between the mirrors because it is not advisable to uh, use an inch uh, the, at a measuring rod so a wooden rod was used and then the length of the wooden rod was measured separately the distance being read from a small steel scale to tenth of millions millimeters and the length we, we introduce a wooden rod to measure the distance between the mirrors and then the distance between the mirrors is measured by measuring the length using a steel scale with high precision the difference in the length of the two paths was then annulled by moving the mirrors e prime so now while doing the experiment we have to cancel the uh, path difference of the two uh, mirrors of the two beams the difference in the length of the two paths was annulled by moving the mirrors e prime so uh, let's see with the e prime mirror this is the e prime or it is clearly visible in this diagram yeah this is the e prime this mirror is uh, is different from other mirrors because it has an extra adjustment so we can move this mirror back and forth by adjusting this screw so so that cancelling the uh, the path difference between the reflected and transmitted beams the mirror had three adjustment this mirror had three adjustment only the e prime mirror and this e prime mirror is uh, somewhat special uh, compared to the other mirrors this mirror had three adjustment it had an adjustment in altitude 
and one in azimuth so you can change the uh, angles and the height of the mirror for all the mirrors but apart from that this e prime mirror has uh, had a okay, had a finer adjustment in the direction of incident ray it can also apart from the two adjustment it has one more adjustment which is in the direction of the incident ray you can move the mirror in the direction of the beam of the ray which other mirrors cannot be moved but keeping very accurately parallel to the former plane so it is a very precise uh, apparatus so that the mirror can move but uh, uh, its plane is always parallel to its previous plane the three adjustments of this mirror could be made with a wooden cover in position and everything is inside the wooden cover uh, which is covering the whole apparatus so uh, it is adjusted from outside by the screw which is showed here this screw is outside the apparatus so there may be some hole from which uh, this screw can be adjusted hole in the wooden cover the path being now approximately equal so by adjustment we make the path of the two beams the two pencils equal the two images of the source of light or of some well defined object placed in front of the condensing lens were uh, made to coincide so the beam were allowed to coincide uh, if you put some object then you will be able to see the the image of that object and uh, by coinciding the two images from the uh, two perpendicular mirrors we can uh, allow them the rays to interfere the telescope was now adjusted for distinct vision of expected interference band then after that uh, the argon light was removed and sodium light was substituted for white light so after then sodium light is used and the interference bands were seen these were now made as clear now the interference beams were made uh, clear uh, viewed clear in the telescope by adjusting the screw of e prime the adjustable mirror and then after that again white light was restored after that after you see the, uh, cl the clear interference pattern in the telescope again you have to replace the sodium light with the white light the screw altering the length of the path was very slowly moved and the screw was very slowly moved because uh, these are the dimensions of the screw one turn of the screw of 100 the screw contains one the screw which uh, which is uh, moving the e prime mirror has uh, 100 threads uh, to the inch uh, in one inch of the screw there are 100 threads which can alter the path nearly 1000 wavelengths so one thread can alter the path nearly uh, one second one turn of the screw of 100 the screw contains 100 threads per inch and one turn of the screw can uh, can change the path by thousand wavelengths what whatever is the wavelength of light uh, by turning the screw by one uh, one turn it can change the path length by thousand wavelengths so it is even more much more precise than the violin spec till the till the colored interference fringes reappeared in the white light so after you replace the the source of light that is uh, the sodium light by white light you will be able to see colored interference fringes so these were now given a 
कन्वीनियंट विद्स तो सो वी विल वी हैव टू ऑब्जर्व सम कन्वीनियंट विथ एंड पोजिशन एंड एपरेटस वाज रेडी फॉर ऑब्जर्वेशन सो दीज वेर सम कैलिब्रेशन विच दे दे लर्न बाई बाई ट्रायल एंड एरर एंड बाई डूइंग द एक्सपेरिमेंट सेवरल टाइम्स द ऑब्जर्वेशन वर कंडक्टेड एज फॉलो नाउ कम ऑन टू द ऑब्जर्वेशन अराउंड द कास्ट आयरन ट्रफ वेस सिक्सटीन इक्वी डिस्टेंट मार्क्स सो आई टोल्ड यू दैट ऑन द कास्ट आयरन यू विल सी दीज आर सिक्सटीन डिफरेंट फ्रॉम वन टू थ्री फोर अराउंड हियर दिस इज द सिक्सटीन मार्क्स सो नाउ यू विल सी वाट इज द यूज ऑफ दोज मार्क्स सो इक्वी डिस्टेंस सिक्सटीन इक्वी डिस्टेंट मार्क्स the apparatus was revolved very slowly one turn in 6 minute so in 6 minute the apparatus took only one turn and after a few minutes the cross wires of the micrometer was set on the clearest of the interference and the cross wire of the mic uh, you can see here that the telescope contains these screws by with adjusting you can set the cross wires cross wires are the markings in the in the lens of the telescope so let me yeah the apparatus was revolved very slowly one turn in 6 minute and after a few minute the cross wire of the micrometer was set on the clearest of interference ranges the motion was so slow that it could be done readily and accurately so as the whole apparatus rotates with a very slow speed so uh, it could be adjusted very accurately the mark the cross wires of the telescope could be adjusted very accurately the reading of the screw head on the micrometer was noted so and after that the screw head uh, you have to measure the reading then here uh, and con- and consistent then when the stone was brought to rest for every observation so if you stop the stone from rotating for every observation for the effects of strains could be noted for at least half a minute after the stone come come to came to rest so even the stone came to rest there are some effects like air inside can rot uh, inside the cover can be in motion and during this time effects of change of temperature came into action so it was suggested uh, they gain from experience that uh, it is better to uh, allow the whole laboratory to be in a constant uniform motion rather stopping it for each marking so the measurement were done while the apparatus is still moving the following table give the means of six readings the first four observations made near noon the second those near 6 o'clock in the evening the readings are divisions of the screw heads so basically the readings are the divisions of the screw head of the e prime mirror the readings are divisions of the screw heads the screw head attached with the telescope uh, the readings are measured from those screw heads the width of the fringes varied from 40 to 60 divisions the mean value being 50 so 40 and 60 you can take the mean it will come to be 50 so that one division one division means 0.02 wavelength so uh, the screw head used in for the telescope the dimensions were 0.02 wavelength so the rotation in the observations at noon was contrary to 
that in the evening observations with that of the hands of a watch to move from one fringe to the next fringe you have to uh, rotate the screw by 40 to 60 degrees being a mean value of 50 the, the mean of 40 and 60 is 50 so to go from one fringe to another fringe you have to uh, tighten or the screw by 40 to 60 divisions so and and so one division means 0.02 wavelength of the of the interference pattern of the light beam used the rotation in the observations at the noon was contrary to and in the evening observation with that of the hands of a watch so these are the observations the noon observation and the and the evening observation so these are the two observations there were six observations done and this is the final mean you can see that it is start with 1 16 and then comes to again 16 so for all division all the markings the readings have been done you can see that these results uh it is decreasing from 44.7 to 13.7 okay okay on july 8 july 9th july 11th and the paper was published in november so if you plot the observations so let's come on to the final observations the result of the observation are expressed graphically in figure 6 this is very famous figure the upper is the curve for the observation at noon so this curve is for noon and this the lower curve is for afternoon uh, these this uh, dark lines are actually the experimental results and this dotted line is for the theoretical calculations so it's nothing to do with the experiment but it has been uh, there to compare the two although this graph must have been uh, somewhat uh, more having more height because uh, but because for this graph different unit has been used the upper is the curve for the observations at noon so this is for the noon and the lower for the evening observation the dotted curves represent 1/8th of the theoretical displacement so according to theory the displacement should be this displacement should be 8 times more but we are not uh, we are just assuming different a scale for this so if you take the scale of this uh, experimental observation this must be 8 times higher than this curve it seems fair to conclude from the figure that if there is any displacement due to the relative motion of the earth and the luminiferous sphere this cannot be much greater than 0.01 of the distance between the fringes so from the experiment it was uh, conducted you can see here that this is almost uh, this is the zero line and uh, the scale is multiplied by the lambda the wavelength of light so from 0 to 0.5 0.04 was the expected what you get is uh this is positive or negative uh, deviation and which is around this is 0.01 this line is correspond to 0.01 uh, times lambda so uh, so displacement due to the relative motion of the earth and the luminiferous this cannot be much greater than 0.01 of the distance between the fringes so you can see that this graph is almost uh, at a distance of uh, 
of 0 0.01 like at this point this approximately 0 0.01 lambda distance so uh, it is almost uh, around this value but the expected uh, the, but the expected result was 0 0.04 0 0.4 sorry 0 0.4 so you can see the expected result here yeah so the displacement to be expected to be 0 0.04 of the distance between the interference fringes so this cannot be much greater than 0 0.01 it seems fair to conclude from the figure that if there is any displacement due to relative motion of the earth and the luminiferous ether, this cannot be much greater than 0 0.01 of the distance between the fringes. So you can see that this line, this uh, line corresponds to 0 0.01 and this, the peak is around this, the peak, the peak is not going above this line. Uh, here it is somewhat uh, lower, lower or around this is 0, minus 0 0.01 lambda but it is approximately around this value 0 0.01 so the experimental results were saying that uh, the results would be 0 0.01 of the distance between the fringes so but from theory considering the motion of the earth in its orbit only if the calculations were made theoretically then the displacement should be from the formula which we calculated in our last lecture or uh, you can also see it in the paper on this page here so this is the final calculation so so the distance d the this is the speed of earth this is the speed of light so uh, after calculation you will get this value the distance d was about 11 meters so the distance you know that for the back and forth reflection of the uh, so the total path is 10 times so approximately you know that the that the slab was approximately 1.5 meters and mirrors were on the slab so after multiplying uh, 10 times it is approximately 11 meters uh, and the wavelength of the yellow light or sodium light uh, or, or you can take the average of the white light it is around 2 into 10 to power 7 for calculation we are not using uh, we are taking for the white light only here the yellow light is referred as an average and the displacement of the expected was 0 0.4 so from theory we were going to expect that the shift in the uh, fringe in uh, around the cross hairs of the telescope should be 0 0.4 times the fringe width of uh, uh, 0.4 times the fringe width but actually in the experiment we were observing 0 0.01 times the fringe so certainly the actual displacement was certainly less than the 20th part so it is uh, even less than the 20th part of this so 0 0.04 and 0 0.01 0 0.01 value is very very less than 0 0.4 around 1 20th or you clearly this is 1 40th of uh, this is 40 times greater than the experimental value the theoretical value is 40 times greater than the uh, experimental value so if you even take the half of the value then this is less than the 20th part and probably less than the 40th part but since the displacement is proportional to the square of the velocity so displacement is proportional to the square of the velocity the relative velocity of earth and ether is probably less than one sixth of the earth's velocity so earth velocity must be uh, less than so if you take this uh, the velocity 
then you get 0 0.0 fringe and now this this is proportional to v square term so from the experiment you are getting 1 40th even you take 1 20th then uh, then if you calculate the velocity it will be the square root and you will get uh, 1 6 so the velocity of the earth and the eta is probably less than 1 6 of the earth's velocity so if you calculate the velocity of earth from the uh, observations of michelson morley the velocity of earth comes to be one uh, less than 1 6 of earth or vital velocity so how this is possible and certainly less than 1 4 so it must be less than 1 4 even in what precedes only the orbital motion of the earth is considered if you consider only the orbital motion if this is combined with the motion of solar system even if you combine it with the solar system concerning but little is known with certainty so suppose that the earth is moving uh, around the sun and it is moving in specific, some specific direction at this moment of time and our whole solar system is moving with some velocity which is just opposite to the velocity of the tangential velocity of the earth so the two velocities can cancel out so uh, from the experiment it was suggested that this is a possibility that uh, the earth is moving uh, opposite to the motion of the uh, the whole solar system and th uh, the final effect is that the, we are getting the one sixth of the earth's velocity from the experimental results the result could have been modified so it was suggested that we have to conduct the experiment after every th uh, three or six months so that the direction of velocity of earth will be uh, will change from the velocity of the whole solar system and it is just possible that the, uh, so we have missed something if this is combined with the motion of our solar system concerning which but little is known with certainty the result could have been modified so the result can be modified and it is said possible it is just possible that the resultant velocity at the time of the observations was small through the uh, though the chances are much against it so uh, the chances are very very less but even it was suggested that uh, the the orbital velocity of earth is opposite with the velocity of the solar system so um, they are cancelling each other and this could be the possible reason the experiment will be therefore be repeated at intervals of every three months and thus all the uncertainty will be avoided so we can be sure of the experimental result if we take the observation every three months it appears from all that precedes reasonably certain that if there be any relative motion between earth and the luminiferous ether it must be small so if if there is uh, any relative motion between earth and ether this motion is very uh, small and because of that we are getting so much smaller result compared to the theoretical one uh, approximately uh, lying between 120 to 140th of the theoretical results quite a small enough entirely to refute Fresnel's explanation of aberration and Fresnel which gave the uh, explanation for the aberration of light so you can refute the Fresnel's explanation that uh, that aberration comes uh, in picture because of the relative motion of ether and the velocity of earth with respect to light stokes has given a theory of vibration which assumes the ether at the earth surface to be at rest so another theory was given by earth, uh, stoke assuming that the ether around the surface of earth is at rest so it's like a, a drag uh, force uh, some f if some body is moving inside a fluid you know that the fluid which is in contact with the solid surface is at rest and as you go uh, above the surface uh, the the velocity of the fluid there is increases there is a velocity gradient the river flowing 
the water flowing in the river uh, as you go deeper and deeper the velocity of the fluid uh, of the water decreases and at the bottom of the river the water is at rest so uh, there is a velocity gradient so stoke has given the theory of vibration which assumes that ether at the earth surface to be at rest with regard to there is some effect by which he he said that uh, the ether around the earth could be at rest and because of that uh, rest frame the observations are not showing those results which are expected from the theory so if you could take the observation outside from uh, from the outside of the solar system or even from uh, even in the space then then the results could be could differ or can match with the theoretical one so abelson assumed the ether at earth surface to be at rest with regard to the latter and only requires in addition that the relative velocity have a potential so uh, the relative velocity there is some gradient or a potential but lorentz so that these conditions are incompatible so lorentz uh, said that these results uh, conditions are incompatible uh, lorentz then proposes a modification which combines some ideas of stokes and fresnel and assumes the existence of a potential together with fresnel's coefficient so uh, the old theory need some modification according to the lorentz and uh, if you go deep in the theory which has already been rejected then you will find that people who are assuming the existence of ether try to uh, justify in every manner why the why the michelson model experiment is not Uh, giving those results which uh, ether theory required if now it were legitimated to conclude from the present work that the ether is at rest with respect with regard to the earth surface although earth is moving so ether must move uh, with a velocity equal to the velocity of earth with respect to the frame of earth but uh, but according to the stokes theory uh, and other theories there is potential kind of thing and the ether around earth is rest at rest with respect to earth and this is coming in the result so this was suggested so according to lorentz there could not be a potential but from lorentz point of point of view there could not be a poten- velocity potential and this own theory and his own theory also fails and even the theory of lorentz even fails so the experiment done by michelson and morley said uh, many things about uh, about the existence of ether Uh, it questions the uh, existence of ether even if you believe that there is uh, a existence of potential then uh, the lorentz theory is not satisfied and even if you uh, as you, if you take the lorentz idea of uh, of detecting ether then the experiment fails so the final potential of this uh, or the outcome of this experiment comes only through the advent of special relativity uh, which we are discussing in our lectures so there is also a supplement uh, provided but i think uh, this will not be of much use for our purpose it's a uh, is a um, motion of the mirror with respect to the beam of light if you s- someone 
if anyone from you is interested in knowing this about this supplement material then i have to make a separate video for that but for our purpose uh, the theory is this is all about the michelson's morel experiment and i think uh, uh, you would have understood the whole experiment and how difficult the experiment was and even the experiment failed to detect the presence of ether this experiment was a masterpiece uh, of the of whole of physics the experimental uh, background of special and general relativity lies uh, behind this this marvelous experiment by michelson and morley and we all are indebted for their hard work and sincerity with which they conducted the experiment so anyway thank you for uh, attending such a long lecture we will be i will be presenting you with uh, time to time i will be presenting such papers uh, also regarding other topics so <laughs> so give your suggestions and uh, your uh, comments are appreciated so <coughs> please like our videos share our videos and uh, subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching